Welcome to Health Tech Innovation Queensland Meetup at Cook Medical. Hi, I'm Anne Damien and I'm a part of the Asia Pacific New Technologies team, also known as Ant. Being a part of Ant, we come across numerous ideas presented to us by health tech entrepreneurs. But did you know only 3 to 5% of all inventions make it as a success to market? So to all the health tech entrepreneurs out there who are very passionate in bringing about a change through their ideas, we've decided to put together a few tips that can help you when you venture out on a pathway to market. These tips come from our very own experts we have here at Cook, and here's what we found. So, you have a great new product. You know it inside out, back to front. We don't. You need to be able to explain exactly what product you're selling, its competitive advantage, and is it protectable? Then, what is the problem your product solves, and what are the other ways to solve this problem? Be able to justify the price differential between the two. Next, take the time to do a detailed literature review so you can explain the contestable market size for the product you're selling. Research this properly, know your numbers. Next, what is the likely clinical acceptance of your product? Does it fit in well with existing clinical practice or are you resolving a problem in a novel way? If so, it could mean extensive training of clinicians. Does the company you're pitching to have an existing sales structure which is complementary to your product? If not, this could be a major challenge. Healthcare industry is heavily regulated industry. Therefore, considering applicable regulatory requirements at early stages of any project would be very beneficial. Two main reasons for this would be to design a compliant product from the beginning of development, rather than making changes later, time, cost, testing, and to understand a ballpark figure of the overall cost to bring a product to market. For example, if a clinical study is needed to prove the safety and efficacy, it would change the overall cost and timelines in millions of dollars. There are four key points to consider bringing a new product to market from a quality assurance perspective. Number one, understand your product. Know how it will be used clinically. Understand its physical, mechanical characteristics. Have testing completed know what your software needs to do and have it validated. Secondly, understand your risks. You need to balance the benefits over the risks. The risk benefit analysis needs to be favourable for your product. Utilise accepted methods of doing this such as ISO 14971, risk management standard for medical devices. Know that your product will be scrutinised is the third thing. The main standard that sets out the requirements for a quality management system for medical devices, ISO 13485, it has a section on design and development. Your development documentation is your evidence and will be evaluated by regulators in order to gain marketing approvals. Your documentation is key. From my experience, most people forget to consider reimbursement. First, weigh up the benefits to the patient and the healthcare system against the existing gold standards. Identify if the product is reimbursable in the countries you are targeting, who the ultimate payers of the product will be, and figure out whether this group will be willing to pay for the product. In relation to patent protection, I would offer three key points. Start early and keep it confidential, Search and get help. If you publicize your idea before you file your patent, you might not be able to get a patent later on and you might prejudice your international options. Of course, you'll probably need the help of others, from collaborators to investors. So when you do share your ideas, make sure you get a confidentiality agreement first. And make sure your potential collaborators are trustworthy before you divulge your secrets. Second, Search. Because a patent gives exclusive rights and protects only new ideas, you'll need to ensure that your idea doesn't already exist or infringe the patents of others. A helpful starting place is the IP Australia website. 
which will link you to Australian and international search databases. Finally, get help. It is possible to navigate the patent application process yourself, but chances are you'll do it wrong. So unless you have specific expertise in patent applications, you should seek professional help. You'll also want to obtain legal advice before you agree to license or assign your invention just to make sure that you're not giving away important rights. So as an entrepreneur, we understand that your ideas are precious to you and that you've put a lot of time and effort into developing them. Um, however, when you approach a manufacturer or a supplier, it's important to understand that we're going to view your ideas through a fresh set of eyes and we're probably going to critique them in a way that they might not have been critiqued before. Um, instead of taking this personally, you should use this as an opportunity to get some feedback on your ideas. And if after this meeting uh, there's obstacles in the way, be open to the thought of working with the supplier or manufacturer to overcome those obstacles, as at the end of the day that might be all it takes to get a product to market. Last but not least, fail early and fail often. It gets more expensive to fail the further along the path to commercialisation you go. Push your product early, learn about its limitations. This will help you understand your product and the risks and ultimately succeed. Do your homework. This will give you justifiable confidence. If you're confident, a potential investor is more likely to be confident and this sets up a better chance of an ongoing conversation past the pitch. Confidence is everything. Good luck.